The Xbox One has gone through a number of changes regarding the look and feel of both the brand as a whole and the general dashboards that we've gotten to see over the years. It almost seems as if the Xbox went from a Mountain Dew powered science fiction gaming machine to a more minimalistic all-in-one design. But with that being said, we decided to take a look back at all of the Xbox dashboards from the very beginning to where we are now. So let's go ahead and get into it. First up, we're going all the way back to 2001 with the original Xbox dashboard. This dashboard had iconic green hues. It had a pretty basic navigation system with game save management, music, and just the general settings section. But it had the really cool sci-fi sound effects and it had this really futuristic vibe, kind of this out of the world feel with the green and the sound effect. And like I said, it feels like a console powered on Mountain Dew. And it could have been for all we know. But it was it was a really cool console that had its own ambiance that we really, really liked. It even had an Easter egg, if you were idle for a certain amount of time, where you could hear whispers. <laughs> which were actually recording from the Apollo mission. The first time I heard it, it was terrifying, but it's kind of cool knowing about it nowadays and looking back at it. As far as this dashboard was concerned, it didn't really change too much throughout the lifestyle of the original Xbox, besides the addition of the Xbox Live tab once that service launched in 2002, which gave you an overview of online friends and voice chat. And while this function was really cool, Halo 2, which was one of the biggest online games at the time, also had its own dashboard type setup for managing friends and talking to people on there. So people kind of bounced back and forth between how they used that function. And while it might have been kind of empty feeling back then, especially compared to the types of dashboards that we have today, it had all the basic functionality you needed back then, it looked cool, and it always will kind of have this special place in a lot of the minds of gamers who played back in the early 2000s. Now we're gonna go ahead and jump ahead to 2005 with the very beginning of the Xbox 360, but the 360 went through a ton of changes over the years. But the initial launch of the 360 had what we like to call the Xbox 360 Blades. So once you booted up the Xbox 360, you're greeted with kind of like a page or folder system where you had four tabs, the Xbox Live tab, Games tab, Media tabs, and the System tab. And then later on they added a Marketplace tab. You were able to go left to right and navigate between each tab. And this aesthetic to the Xbox 360 actually was pretty nice. It was clean and kind of straightforward and really aligned with what Xbox 360 was trying to be as a brand. And it kind of still had that gamer fuel vibe from the original Xbox days, but it was much more refined into an easier to read and easier to navigate system that just kind of had everything straightforward and layered. It worked out pretty nicely here. It might not have been the most pleasing to look at, but it really got the job done. Fast forward three years, the Xbox 360 NXE launch really changed the design quite a bit and kind of shoehorned the new design that most players who had an Xbox 360 probably remember if they were playing in the middle years of the Xbox. While a huge majority of people were fans of the simple Xbox 360 blade design, the update decided to switch it up into more of a column or row based system. NXE stood for the new Xbox experience and people were kind of excited about it and of course once the update was implemented a lot of people had kind of mixed opinions about it. Basically, this design just kind of centered what you were looking at, so if you were new to the console, it was really easy to find what you're looking for or figure out what category you're in, where when you first got on the old Blade system, everything was a little bit spread out and a little bit less focused. During this time, because Nintendo was doing so well with their Mii characters, Xbox decided to add Xbox avatars, which are actually really fun. You were able to customize them and even buying little things off of the 
Xbox store for your character was kind of cool, especially because your avatars were actually used as in-game characters in certain games like Doritos Crash Course or Castle Miner Z. Nowadays, the Xbox avatars look absolutely terrifying. I don't know why we can't just go back, but GG, I guess. Then we get to 2011, the Xbox 360 Metro update which was kind of the last major UI update that we would see on the Xbox 360. They, they made a few tweaks to this later on to make it more in line with the Xbox One, but the 2011 update was the main update that we saw on the 360. And it actually ended up being the longest lasting Xbox dashboard to date, just because it's still the main dashboard they have. While the old design introduced the scrolling functionality, which they kind of kept, this new design aim to be a bridge between the new scrolling design and the older blade design and also mixing in elements of Windows 8. This design was pretty unfavorable. It looked nice at the time just to have something fresh and new, but a lot of people really didn't care for this design too well. They took away the original darker color scheme when you're navigating through the quick dashboard and replaced it with this really bright design that really wasn't easy on the eyes and a lot of people really missed the older darker design for the dashboard that was just really nice and it's fun to play in the dark you don't want to be blinded by your dashboard if you're playing a creepy game or something i'm just saying it was a really poor design choice however during this time the new dashboard also introduced cloud saves which was a nice and convenient way to store your games it also kind of was an indicator of the direction microsoft was wanting to go with Xbox as a brand and it kind of showcased the more media side of the Xbox 360 and less of the gamer side of the 360. Unfortunately this update killed some of the really cool things that were in the old update like Netflix used to let you watch with your friends and your Xbox avatars were in a little movie theater together and then 2011 the Metro update just wiped that out. That was gone. Rest in peace to that. Also for the first time ever they added advertisements to the front page of the Xbox. That wasn't too favorable. It just, I mean, you spend a couple hundred dollars on your console and then you have some advertisement for some insurance company or something. It was a little bit weird. Nowadays, on the newer UIs, it's a little bit better because at least the advertisements are relevant to gamers and not just some random advertisement, but it was still weird. And they also had this huge thing dedicated to Bing on the Xbox dashboard in 2011. That was really weird. Because no one used Bing then, and no one uses Bing now, I guess. And that was kind of it for the Xbox 360. Moving forward to 2013, we had the original Xbox One dashboard, which was god-awful. It added a new snap system, kind of like what Windows had for a while, that let you run apps side by side, allowing you to play your game and maybe watch a movie at the same time or switch between the two. When it worked, it rarely worked. It was just awful. There was also less unused user interface space on the Xbox One, which was kind of nice. And while on paper, it sounded like a good user interface design and it kind of looked good if you weren't trying to use it, it slowed down the whole system and the interface felt unresponsive and just really clunky to use. Also, the Kinect was supposed to be this huge part of the Xbox One at launch and everything was set up for Kinect. And that was also kind of a way you were supposed to navigate the dashboard, but no one liked to use it, it didn't work well, and you could yell in game chat commands for people's connects and it could shut their Xbox off. This was actually the shortest lasting user interface design ever. It got replaced in just a little bit over a year and they did a bunch of tweaks throughout the time that this was the main dashboard trying to make it better, which confused everyone because it felt like the dashboard was changing every other month and it was just not good. And besides the whole fact that the party system didn't even work at launch, this dashboard definitely is probably the worst Xbox dashboard that we had seen to date. In 2015 though, they launched the new Xbox One experience and they announced they would be reworking the Xbox dashboard to fit a little bit better with the launch of Windows 10 and also the new Xbox 360 backwards compatibility that was just coming out. The design got rid of the tile design which Windows was known for and focused more on the responsiveness and speed while at the same time Microsoft kind of shifted away from the Kinect altogether and focused on the core elements of the dashboard that would make it easier to use for new people. 
They rearranged the menu buttons also to make it easier to open up a side menu rather than taking you out of the game to get to whatever you're trying to do, which kind of acted as the old quick dashboard from the Xbox 360, and it just made the whole user interface a lot smoother. There were still some things that they needed to fix, and it wasn't perfect, but it definitely was leaps in the right direction compared to what we had at launch. And then in 2017, we have the latest Xbox One UI, and this is kind of the same one that we have today, other than a couple of tweaks here and there. This one's generally very simple to use. It feels smooth, and it's nice going from the homepage to the store in almost a seamless manner. It added support for mixers and groups, which also feel very responsive to use. There's a lot of customization possible, especially compared to the other consoles. Content blocks can now be added, moved, or removed as your interests or habits change, and it kept a few good features still from the previous design, like the menu not taking you out of the game. This also added an option to choose between light and dark themes, and while the Xbox One always kind of focused on the dark theme, if you're one of those crazy people who like to be blind when you play games, you could turn on the light theme then that's great for you, not for anyone else. There's more unused user interface space again, which doesn't have to be something bad, it's just what a few people complain about when it comes to design, because they could put more stuff in these open spaces for players to use. And while this isn't a part of the Xbox, there is an Xbox dashboard for the PC, which launched sometime in 2016, I think. Check me on that. It's actually a pretty decent and straightforward dashboard that works really well for communicating back and forth with Xbox One players and other PC players. However, it does have its number of bugs and glitches that Microsoft doesn't seem to be too hurried to fix yet, but at its core, it's relatively reliable and you can typically get it to work. Sometimes you might have to leave a party and rejoin to get it to always work, but for the most part, you can figure it out without like a whole service being down. And that's kind of where we're at with the Xbox and its dashboards at the moment. While we're excitedly awaiting what's coming up with the next dashboards here in the future, we don't know what it's going to be like. It could be a really bumpy road, or they could just bring back that solid Xbox 360 design from, you know, the, the 2008 era. That'd be really nice. And, uh, and, and, and I take that one back. That was my personal favorite, but you can leave a comment. What Xbox design did you like the best? Leave it down below, and if you're new, be sure to subscribe and turn notifications on. Here at Rocket Sauce, we really focus on covering a lot of, like, Xbox 360 and newer Xbox stuff, so if you're a fan of some of the retro Xbox things, or you just kind of like what's up with Xbox, consider subscribing because we kind of mix in a bit of both. You can also check out our video we did on Doritos Crash Course! Does anyone remember that game? No? You can also check out the newest Xbox 360 games that are coming out. So that's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next time with a brand new video.